Dr. Treasure, thank you very much for the specific input into our cases. Would you please though take us back to first principles and just walk us through organogenesis and how that relates to the use of medication, whether they're legal or illegal alcohol and such, and also to the um, drug classification in pregnancy. Sure. I guess the first thing we should say is that pregnant women use drugs. A lot of people tend to think that they don't, but the statistics show that 95% of women will use four or more drugs mm -hmm. during their pregnancy. So it's an issue that we've got to come to grips with. And the first step is, I guess, going back to first principles and separating out in our mind the difference between the obstetric calendar and the organogenesis calendar. Mm -hmm. So these days, uh, most clinicians would use an obstetric calendar, so you're mm -hmm. counting from the last menstrual period. But as a pharmacologist, I count from tonight was the night. Because for me to see whether a drug has an organ, uh, the potential to cause an organ-specific anomaly, I need to know at the precise moment mm -hmm. that drug is targeting a particular organ that is developing. Mm -hmm. So from tonight, was the night, we've got day zero through to about day 14, mm -hmm. the period prior to implantation. And this is where drugs have an all or none effect. So the conceptus, the little ball of cells, will either continue to replicate, um, one cell to two, two to four, four to 16, and I can't go beyond <laughs> there and squaring, or um, it will fail to implant mm -hmm. because of some exposure to whether it's a carcinogen, a toxin such as a drug. Mm -hmm. And if implantation has taken place, irrespective of the exposure, um, basically there's been no harm mm -hmm. because implantation cannot take place unless you've got an intact conceptus. So for okay. the woman who had a really Wonderful New Year's, Year's Eve, Eve. <laughs> only to find out a week later, later she was pregnant, but just. If implantation has taken place, the HCG has risen and you can actually detect the pregnancy, then mm -hmm. you can reassure her. Not that she will have a happy and healthy pregnancy, but that she has not changed her, her baseline risk mm -hmm. for a happy and healthy pregnancy. So that's the first 14 days. Now once implantation takes place, mm -hmm. HCG rises and that's the physiological signal for organ formation. Mm -hmm. And there is discrete time frames when the individual organs form. So if we go back to thalidomide, mm -hmm. um, thalidomide caused phocomelia. Now this was a drug that was introduced uh, primarily um, as an antiemetic mm -hmm. um, and also for um, sedation to help you mm -hmm. sleep. If you think about when emesis occurs, mm -hmm. it matches the time frame for limb bud formation. Mm -hmm. So women were taking a drug that caused or had the potential to cause a dose related anomaly mm -hmm. and they were taking it at the exact time that anomaly could occur. Mm -hmm. So they were incredibly unlucky. You had to have all of those Swiss cheeses mm -hmm. line up um, for this um, teratogenicity to have taken place. Mm -hmm. But certainly that's what we're looking for, a higher than baseline incidence. So you need to have anomalies uh, with an incidence of higher than about 3%. Mm -hmm. A consistent pattern, mm -hmm. phocomelia, and a, a causal link between the timing of drug exposure and the actual organ malformation. Mm -hmm. And in that scenario, you can get an anomaly. So that risk is between week two to week eight after conceiving, mm -hmm. or week four to week 10 on an obstetric calendar. Mm -hmm. After that period, all of the organs are formed. So uh, for example, a drug that causes cardiovascular defects. Mm -hmm. Once all of the, um, the chambers of the heart have formed, the fetus is at no greater risk for cardiovascular defect than giving the drug to you or I. Mm -hmm. right. So we move into a honeymoon period between week eight and about week 20, where the only thing that drugs can really do is change the growth of those organs. So you can certainly get into uterine growth retardation mm -hmm. and smoking. Nicotine mm -hmm. as a vasoconstrictor would be mm -hmm. a perfect example. Mm -hmm. So it's, nicotine is not a teratogen, 
but it can certainly cause an adverse fetal effect mm -hmm. in terms of IUGR. And is this like with the ACE inhibitors in a similar? Yes, mm -hmm. um, ACE inhibitors sort of traverse two areas. Mm -hmm. So I said they're not classically, uh, it, it, it depends on how you define a teratogen. Mm -hmm. Ultimately we've um, malformed that kidney, mm -hmm. but it's less about the actual structure of the organ as the, f rather the function of the organ with ACE inhibitors. Mm -hmm. So we, um, because of the um, increased renal perfusion mm -hmm. initially, um, you're actually uh, increasing vasculature um, in circumference, but there's only so much circulation. So once you've got that transient increase, then you get the drop in BP, mm -hmm. and then you start to get a trickle of fluid mm -hmm. into those kidneys. Mm -hmm. And as mum and baby fight mm -hmm. for perfusion, mm -hmm. um, it's usually mum that wins over baby, and you only need one other factor to come into place, like dehydration, mm -hmm. and those, those effects manifest. So it's trickier, because mm -hmm. it's not classically teratogenicity, mm -hmm. because it's a, an effect that progressively occurs but it is still ultimately in its worst scenario irreversible. Mm -hmm. um, so in that honeymoon period it's the effect on growth and development mm -hmm. but not teratogenicity mm -hmm. but by the time we get to about week 22 mm -hmm. then baby is starting to progressively become more dominant mm -hmm. in its own um, nutrient intake mm -hmm. from mum and responsible for N nutrient or toxin elimination, which mm -hmm. includes drug elimination. Mm -hmm. And so that's the period where fetal toxicity mm -hmm. becomes important. And this is this cumulative this effect is, we were talking that's about That's right, previously. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be worse with drugs that have long half-life, that are lipophilic, um, because you'll get a higher um, uh, accumulation curve, mm -hmm. but essentially all drugs have the potential to accumulate in third trimester. Mm -hmm. Okay, D drug classification system. Okay, so drug classification system is um, I think a really important question because the main thing clinicians see in mm -hmm. product information is an ADEC category. Mm -hmm. And in fact the ADEC categories are used internationally. We, we came up with the classification system mm -hmm. and we've given it to the world. Mm -hmm. And they go A, B, C, D and X. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they'd chosen something else as um, their nomenclature because unfortunately most clinicians think that that's a Likert scale. Mm -hmm. And yes, certainly A is safest and X is worse, but it is not a progressive moving from one classification to the next. Each classification has its own definition. So in fact, the most dangerous drugs are category B. Mm -hmm. And that's because it says, I don't know. Right? Watch this space. Mm -hmm. The drug can become a category X or a category A with time. Mm -hmm. So all category B is is limited human data, mainly animal data, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Category A is um, usually older drugs and we've got a long history of safety and the drug can be used in any trimester with no change in maternal baseline risk. Mm -hmm. Category C says safe in first trimester, so basically the drug doesn't cause irreversible defects present mm -hmm. at birth that are predictable, mm -hmm. but they will cause fetal toxicity mm -hmm. or they can accumulate mm -hmm. and that accumulation is significant in third trimester. Mm -hmm. So mainly CNS active drugs mm -hmm. would um, be the, the largest group of category C drugs. Mm -hmm. Category D is you need to judge for this individual patient risk versus benefit. Mm -hmm. And the classic example would be nicotine replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. It is category D, yet smoking, I can go to any tobacconist and mm -hmm. buy without any kind of triage a packet of cigarettes. It contains nicotine and 4,000 chemicals, including carcinogens, some of which can change fetal outcome. Nicotine replacement therapy is simply the vasoconstrictor component. Mm -hmm. So we will on occasion judiciously use NRT in pregnancy despite its category D because it's safer than the alternative. Mm -hmm. yeah.